Thank you all for joining us for the first inaugural MCT2D uh, statewide collaborative meeting. Uh, I'm Caroline Richardson. I'm the director of the collaborative. Um, and we are thrilled to go ahead and get started. We have a very packed agenda today uh, with uh, a series of, uh, of great presentations. We're going to start just a little bit of introduction and, and um, then we're going to move into a discussion of a, of a project called the Grocery Delivery Pilot, uh, which you'll have an opportunity to join or to participate in if, if you choose to. Uh, we will then have a discussion by some uh, by our accelerated sites about their experiences implementing the initiatives of MCT2D at their sites. Uh, a brief uh, break for lunch and networking. Uh, and then after the lunch, you will have a chance to ask questions of the accelerated sites about their experiences and uh, strategies for solving problems related to implementation and successes. Then at one o'clock, we're gonna have our keynote speaker, Dr. David Ludwig, who is the uh, an, uh, pediatric endocrinologist from Harvard and the uh, author of Always Hungry. He's gonna be giving us a talk about low carbohydrate diets and, uh, and their effect on obesity and type two diabetes. Uh, and then some brief session for questions from Dr. Ludwig. And then we're gonna have a really uh, interesting presentation uh, a data, uh, a study, a secondary study, data analysis study of some of the Blue Cross Blue Shield data around uh, costs of SGLT2 inhibitors and GLP-1 receptor agonists in type 2 diabetes with um, some pretty astonishing results. So, and then a brief wrap up at the end with future directions. So that's our day. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, just to reorient you to who's here, we have, um, 24 physician organizations who are represented here in the room. We have an additional four who recently joined, but are not, we, we didn't require them to come because they just joined, but they'll be here at the next col uh, collaborative wide meeting. Uh, we have 264 primary care practices, 15 nephrology practices, 14 endocrinology practices, and about 750 participating physicians in the collaborative. Here are the four new physician organizations who will be joining us soon. We're thrilled to have them. And uh, for those of you who were at our, attended our regional meetings, we had seven regional meetings um, and they all went really well uh, with uh, representatives from practices in the different regions meeting together, collaborating, solving problems together and learning from each other. Um, we are also celebrating uh, uh, our first year with some new collab collaborative expertise. Uh, some of you at the regional meetings met Mike Hung, a nephrologist who gave a presentation about, uh, uh, about chronic kidney disease and diabetes. Um, we have a, a pharmacist now, a PharmD, uh, he Heidi Dees, who's here today. And um, she is uh, helping us with material content educational sessions around SGLT2 inhibitors and GLP-1 receptor agonists. And then uh, one of our most recent hires uh, is our di new dietitian who's an expert in low carbohydrate diets and is helping us put together content for um, patient facing educational materials, provider uh, educational sessions, et cetera, around low carbohydrate diet coaching. So um, we've had some drop-in sessions and we're gonna have more of them, but these are sessions where, uh, online sessions, where you can meet with either our, our PharmD or our uh, dietitian, ask questions, get ideas, learn from each other. Um, so far we've had one of these sessions, but there will be one every month going forward. And those will be, the timing will be listed on the website. Um, and we just want to say thank you to Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan. Um, they are our sponsors. They pay, they pay for both our central coordinating center, but also for the value-based reimbursement incentives that you all get. Um, more importantly, I think they were really instrumental in even generating the idea for this collaborative and moving quality improvement out of the hospital and into the primary care and outpatient practices, which has really been a challenge, but also uh, a, a great opportunity. 
Um, just a reminder for those of you who are thinking about enrolling new practices from your PO, you still have some time until July 15th to sign up some new practices if you're interested. And um, also uh, wanted to just have a shout out for our patient advisory board. Uh, we have a very active patient advisory board. Um, and uh, our goal with the patient advisory board is just to make sure that that uh, our patients have a voice in decision-making around what the collaborative focus is on and move forward with. We uh, also ask our patient advisory board to review all our patient-facing educational materials, make sure they're appropriate, clear, usable, uh, and, or, and uh, respectful, um, and to give us input on, on our, our new initiatives. We do have patient advisory board meetings, and we've had several of them. Um, and on August 16th will be our next one. We'll be talking about how patients navigate insurance coverage around diabetes services. Um, and we do have one member of our patient advisory board here today with us. Raise your hand. So thank you for showing up. And then we have another member of our patient advisory board will be joining us in the afternoon and you'll meet him later. Okay, so we have some new tools that we've developed. At the request of people during our regional meeting, we learned about some needs that you guys had in, or that your practices had in, in clinical care. Um, we started with an anti-obesity medication coverage uh, template, and then uh, we developed a low carbohydrate lifestyle handout, one page starter or two page uh, starter for patients who are thinking about starting a, a low carbohydrate diet with their, for their type two diabetes. Uh, we've also developed a, uh, a video uh, with our pharmacist who um, is uh, teaching people how to do self-injections of GLP-1 receptor agonists, which is a barrier to initiating these medications. Um, we so far have one of these videos created, um, and, and you'll see that it has both audio, but also step-by-step uh, -step instructions We'll have one for every uh, one of these, um, every every uh, one of the option of the GLP-1 receptor agonists eventually in the works. Um, we have a few new projects that we're working on for materials. Uh, one is a patient-facing kit about affording type 2 diabetes care and coverage, how to work with your insurance company, a series of more of those videos about GLP-1 injectables, and then You'll hear a little more about this in a minute, but we have a new program, a jumpstart program for low carb recipes, meal plans, and nutrition education. So I'm gonna hand it off to Jake, our data hub expert, for a brief review of the new things in the data hub. Thank you, Dr. Richardson. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. So I'm just going to talk very briefly about some new features that we've added to the dashboard. Um, and we think that they're fairly exciting, and we wanted to make sure that we tell you about them so that they can be uh, useful to you in your practice. And so um, you guys are familiar if you were at or have seen the dashboard recorded sessions from the regional meetings or any of the trainings that MDC has put on with that we have a number of filters in our patient identification side of the dashboard. And so we, um, so we added a CGM filter. So but previously we did have the ability to see whether or not a patient was on a CGM through the claims data on the patient profile. We do now have the ability to filter by if patients are on a CGM. So you can look for patients that are, or if you wanted to find patients that could potentially benefit from one that are not currently on one, you could use that for that. We also have the pharmacy carve out filter. So we, again, this is something we had on the patient profile, but now you can also search for patients who do or do not have a carve out. Again, the usefulness here um, is numerous, including being able to see if it, obviously CGM coverage is a lot easier for patients who do not have carve outs because you know what their insurance coverage is through their actual plan. Um, and then we also added a screening filter for retinopathy. And so the retinopathy screen is by the HEDIS definition of whether or not the patient has met that screening criteria. And so you can see which of your patients have met that criteria and which ones have not. And so we also have a couple of new data elements and we focused uh, quite heavily on the renal side. Uh, and so we do have the renal info tab. Um, and so we have added the urine albumin creatinine ratio, which will also have the filter, as you can see there. Um, you can also filter by whether or not that result is current being in the last 12 months. 
or if it was an older result. You'll also be able to see, obviously, on the patient profile, the actual numerical value. Same for the EGFR. You'll be able to see and filter for that. And then on the bottom of the middle of the screen here, you can see how that is represented actually on the patient profile. So you, the number on top is your numeric lab value, and then the date below it is the date that that lab was taken. We are also working on a summary statistics side of the dashboard. So as of right now, you guys are familiar with the dashboard as a patient identification tool. We are adding what you will be much more familiar with in a quality improvement standpoint as a summary statistics overall. How is your clinic doing? How is your PO doing versus the collaborative versus other practices in your PO? You'll be able to compare whatever you'd like, depending on what you have access to. So you can see in the top left-hand corner, we have filters there. It says sample PO compared to collaborative. And so you can see, for example, this is just a one, I'm sorry, uh, CGM use in the last 12 months. Um, and so you can see the percentage of patients in your practice or whatever it is that you've selected that are on a CGM by whether or not it's a uh, patient has active insulin, inactive insulin, or no insulin status, or all patients.